Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Monel Idrisi, author of The Muslim Narcissist. In today's podcast, we will be talking about the narcissistic hoovering strategy and how the hoovering manipulation is used on victims. So, so let's start with explaining what hoovering means. So psychologists use the term hoovering to highlight the manipulation tactic that many narcissists use to get people back into their lives. So it is essentially a hoover where you feel like you are being sucked into that person's life almost against your will because they are so manipulative. They are using maybe heavy love bombing to get you back in, um, heavy manipulation, emotional emotional manipulation, all these types of things that they can do to hoover you back into their lives. And many victims feel like they're being sucked in. A lot of victims feel like they cannot resist. They have no power, no will, no force, no discipline against this hoover strategy, which is why the it's a very powerful manipulation tool that many narcissists use to get supply. So I want to actually begin this podcast by explaining also what supply is, what narcissistic supply is, and what the difference is between old supply and new supply and the current supply. So narcissists have to get a benefit from you. So if they if there's a narcissist that's in your life at the moment, they are there because they're getting some sort of benefit. Now they love to leech on people. They will only interact with you. They will only actually pursue you if you have something that they want. So it's usually something that will fill a void in their lives that they're missing. For example, because they're very insecure people, they may go for people who are out of their league. Well, they usually do go for people who are out of their league because it's a challenge for them. If I can get this person, if I can get this person who is super good looking, super successful, super wealthy, you know, super loved by people, um, then it will make me look good. They always think about what is it that I can do? What can I get to make me look good in front of other people? That's why lots of men get the trophy wife who's extremely beautiful. That's why a lot of men, you know, marry women of high status. They marry influencers. They, you know, they, they, they like to pursue women who make them look good. And what they get out of that is a slice of a good life, the slice of a good lifestyle. They get money out of it. They get sex out of it. They get admiration from other people like, wow, how did you get that man? Or how did you get that woman? That's narcissistic fuel that they need to survive. They need it to, you know, to feel good. Now, everything that they want from you, if you notice they're not actually willing to work for it themselves. So if they really admire and envy wealthy people, you will see that they don't really do much in their lives to actually become wealthy. And if they do, they take shortcuts. They want it fast and they want it quick without the hard work. Um, If they are with somebody who is like very good looking, they love it when people say, you know, how did you get that person? Like that person is way out of your league. Um, They do enjoy it in the beginning, but those kind of compliments eventually will start to wear, wear on them because they start to believe that actually, you know, people are looking at me like, I don't deserve this. And then they start to believe and they start to feel like I don't actually deserve this. And they start to self-sabotage the relationship. So you will find that they will never really strive to to actually have what you have. They just want it from you. They want it in the easiest way possible. And that's why many narcissistic people are liars. They steal. They deceive. Um, they will con you out of things. They commit fraud because the easiest way for them to get money or to get people to like them is to lie and deceive and pretend to be something that they're not. Pretend to be someone that they're not. And that will be the easiest way for them to get what they want. So if you come across a narcissist... I promise you, if they have no interest in you, it's because you don't have what they want. They will not entertain or waste time um, getting to know you or, you know, investing in you when they know that what you have isn't what they want. So, for example, some narcissists might want someone who's super kind, super naive, super delusional because 
they know that it's very difficult for them to hide their narcissism. And if they're with someone who is super empathic and kind and delusional and naive, then they can get away with being in a long-term relationship because that person will always make excuses for them. Now, another narcissist might just want money. Another narcissist might want, you know, a comfortable lifestyle, stability. And that could be men too. A lot of men, a male narcissist, they look for women who have their own homes and, you know, who have good careers because they want to be financially looked after. These are children in, in adult bodies and, you know, they look for, for women who can benefit them and take care of them. So narcissists don't always have the same motive. So what a narcissist might like in you, another narcissist might not. And they, might, they, they pursue people for different reasons and in different periods of their, you know, of their life. So in one in one period, they might need money, and in another period, they need someone who is highly empathic and, and naive, for example. So if someone, if, there's a, if a narcissist is looking for a, a long-term relationship or a marriage, they will not tend to go for women who have benefits that have an expiration date or that could run out quickly. So for example, if they're looking for um, money, then usually these are these are short-term relationships, so a narcissist will go into that marriage, uh, whether it's a man or a woman, This, of course this applies to men and women, but they will go into a marriage knowing that it's not going to last very long. I might be in this marriage for like two or three years, I'll get what I can out of it, I'll get as much money as I can out of it and benefits out of it, business contacts, career advice, career help, you know, help a, a helping hand on that ladder, on the property ladder, all of those things. If that's what they're after, um, knowing that the marriage will not last for more than five years, then that is what they'll do. However, the narcissists who want a long-term marriage, who want a marriage that will last forever, or for like 20 years, 15 years, if they're looking long-term, then they will always go for a woman or a man who is highly, highly, highly empathic and highly naive. Because they know that that person, especially if they're religious, especially if they're religious, because, you know, in Islam, you know, the Prophet Muhammad said, you know, give people 70 excuses before you judge them negatively. And obviously this is not applied in, you know, in regards to abuse, but there are some highly empathic and religious people who, who truly believe in that and they take that literally. So when a narcissist is showing red flags and showing problematic behaviour, they will go out of their way for the sake of Allah, for the sake of the deen, to give that person as many excuses as possible for their bad behaviour. And when it comes, you know, when we're talking, you know, when we're applying this in the context of, you know, narcissists within the Muslim community, you will find that many top narcs, a lot of top narcs, especially those who are scholars and highly knowledgeable, you will find that they are married to men and women who are religious and they always make excuses for their bad behaviour. They will always say, it does, it's fine, you know, Allah will reward me if, I, if I'm patient, Allah will help me if I'm patient, you know, Allah will give me more if I, you know, if I conceal the faults of this person, conceal the abuse of this person, a lot of religious people will make excuses for abusers because they understand that hadith wrong. They understand, you know, Islam wrong when it comes to making excuses for other people. So, and while we're on that subject, you know, when we are asked to make excuses for other people, it's just, it's at a time when, you know, we, for example, if we are in, um, you know, we just, we just have to give people the benefit of the doubt, but not every time, not every time, because if we were to do that every time, then we will get abused. We will get abused. You know, we have to give people a chance to explain a, for a person to rectify their behavior, for a person to explain themselves, you know, they, you know, they, they can, they have the opportunity to do that. But when you're doing that all the time with someone who is consistently problematic you know you're dealing with a narcissist who has targeted you because they have seen that trait in you they have seen that you have no problem giving someone the benefit of the doubt every time and especially when it's to do with the husband or wife because you want the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being patient with your spouse so the different types of supply that narcissists have um, will indicate what happens to them in their relationships. So for example, 
The current supply is the person that they're, current with, that they're currently with and who they're benefiting from. New supply is are the people who they don't know. They still haven't met yet. These are people they may go online on dating apps, marriage apps, and they might, you know, hunt for, vic- hunt for new people, new victims who know nothing about them. These are people who do not know the narcissist and they will come, you know, they will come across them in their lives when, you know, they match with them on dating apps, when they meet them, you know, at events, at gatherings, wherever it may be. Now, the old supply are people that the narcissist has already interacted with, has already had relationships and experiences with, and they are kept in the harem garage. You know, they're kept in in the store cupboard to be recycled when they're needed. So the old supply could be, it could be women or men that a narcissist has met, and they weren't really that interested in them at the time, but they saw a benefit in them. They kept it, they kept it for another time. They kept that person stored for another time. So, for example, if a narcissist is doing well financially in that period of his life or her life, and they don't need someone with money at that time, but they come across someone who's a very good victim for that, who can, who can offer them money, they keep that person as a friend for when the time comes when they actually do need money. But it's not the person that they need at the time. They need at the time. So that's why you find narcissistic people, they tend to have, um, like men, they have hidden female friends and women have hidden male friends because these are the old sources of supply that they've come across in their life who have been proven to be beneficial. They've been proven to be naive. They've been proven to fall for the narcissist, you know, false self, okay, who they pretend to be. So a narcissist is not going to get rid of anyone who they were able to pull the wool over their eyes. They will keep them in their life. And when you get into a relationship with this narcissist, you won't know about these friends. You won't know about them. And when you do find out about these friends, let's just say you're a man and you come across one of these people, okay, in, in, your, in your wife's life or your, or the woman that you're talking to for marriage, suddenly this guy pops up out of nowhere or you hear about someone in her life, and you ask her, who is he? And she says to you, don't worry about him. He's just a brother to me. He's just a brother. You know, I don't see him anything more than a brother or a friend. And the same thing goes for women. You know, a woman will turn up that he's never spoken about. Maybe he's hidden her. Or she finds out something, um, and he will say, oh, don't worry about her. She's just a friend. I've known her for a very long time. She's a long-term family friend. You know, she's no threat to you. Don't worry about it. Um, You know, she's helped me with this and that in my life. She's just a friend. There's no problem. These are the exact people who are recycled old supply. They are the ones who are on the back burner for when things don't work out with you. I can promise you that. It's always the case because someone who truly respects you, someone who's truly religious and they're God-fearing and they're respectful... They don't keep male friends. Women don't keep male friends, especially male friends that they go out with. And the same with men. You know, a man does not need female friends when he's in a relationship or in a marriage. He doesn't need them. And if he does need them, then it would be for, you know, it would be for reasons that are, for example, they they could be very beneficial for him. For example, let's just say the female friend is is a lawyer and he needs to, you know, he needs some legal advice. You can always ask her. But that would be the the extent of of the relationship. It wouldn't go further than that. So um, you've got to be very careful when you hear these phrases from men and women like, oh, he's just a brother. Oh, he's just, just a friend. Those are the exact people you will see with you will see the narcissist with when things don't work out with you. All of a sudden, when the narcissist discards you because you've now run out of money or now you're not giving them what they want, they will rummage through their list of contacts, right? Their list of hidden friends that they have that they never told you about. And they will find the one that has the supply that they need at the time. And before you know it, they're now in a relationship with that person. They are now in a relationship with that person who they told you that you don't have to worry about. That same person who, who, who the woman told you that 
um, oh, he's just my brother. I just see him as a brother. She's now in a relationship with him because things didn't work out with you and she needs the supply that he's given her. And it's the same with women. Men and women both do this. And you get a lot of people who are so distraught, so depressed, so angry when they see their ex narc with someone from that store cupboard. They, they get so upset because they fell for the lies of that person being just a brother or just a friend. And all of a sudden now you have to see that this person is now in a relationship with that, with that, with that same person. So that's the old recycled supply, okay? That's the old supply. Now, recycled supply is when... I'll give you an example of a man who has a woman in his life and she's just, she's just so desperate for him. She loves him. She puts him on a pedestal. Any time he comes back to hoover her, when things aren't going well in his life with his current relationship, she will always take him back. The recycled supply is the supply that always gets hoovered back in. Now, when you get hoovered back in, the narcissist will never respect you. And why don't they respect you? It's because they know that you know who they are. They know that you know they're abusive and they're disrespectful and that they discard and that they cheat and lie and manipulate. They know that because you've been through that cycle with them already. So when they come to hoover you, when they come to try and suck you back into their life, they might send you a, hey, thinking about you, I miss you, I saw something today that, you know, that reminded me of you, I just wanted to see how you were, I had a dream about you last night, I just wanted to check in on you, these are all Hoover tactics, things that will get you to reply to them, okay, now they'll heat check you first, they will send something like that, like, hey, you know, oh, I'm, I called you by mistake, sorry, just to see how you're going to react, now, if the old supply who has dealt with them before comes across as being excited to hear from the narcissist or they just give them any kind of response, whether it's negative, positive, angry, whatever it is, if you give, if that supply gives the narcissist a reaction, that narcissist knows that he's got a way in. He's got a way in. Because even if you give them an angry response, telling them to go away, leave me alone, you know, I don't want to hear from you, why are you contacting me? The narcissist knows that he or she still has power over you because they they believe that you're still upset. They still have that control over your emotions. You, they're still affected. The victim is still affected by what that narcissist did to them and it makes them happy. And that's when they know that they can start chipping away until they eventually hoover you back in. So when you come across as being angry and upset, believe me when I tell you that the narcissist is happy because they're like, oh, they're still upset. They're still heartbroken over what I did. Because they're still in, a, in, in such a, a low emotional state, I can love bomb myself you know, my way back in. I can do that. Now, if you give them a happy response, so it looks like you're excited, you're happy to hear from them. The narcissist translates it as, you've been waiting for me to contact you. You've been waiting. You've been hoping that I will come back, right? And so the narcissist will find his way back in or her way, or her way back in. So if at this stage an old, old source of supply allows the narcissist back into their life, the narcissist immediately, immediately drops all respect for them. Because they now see them as stupid. They now see that this old supply who knows who they are, who's already been treated so badly by them before, has let them back into their life. It's like, you know who I am. And I'm trying my luck here. And, it, and, and it's worked. You know, all I had to do was, you know, give you a few, uh, a few nice words, a few, charming, a few charming sentences here and there. And I, I got my foot in the door. It was that easy. So a narcissist would already have no respect for you if they managed to hoover you already. From the very beginning, he's already or she's already got no respect for you because they immediately think that you're stupid. And narcissists don't like to be with stupid people. And because they don't like to be with stupid people, they already know that this relationship that they're going to have with you is going to be temporary because you're going to frustrate them. You will frustrate the hell out of them 
because they like to be with people who are more superior. They like to be with people who are in, intelligent because when someone is intelligent and the narcissist manages to play their game on that intelligent person, they feel powerful. They feel like, I managed to fool a, an intelligent person. I managed to fool and manipulate someone who everyone sees as being intelligent, Right? But if you're stupid, if the narcissist believes that you are really stupid, then they're only going to use you temporarily as a crutch to get over the narcissistic injury that's happened in the current relationship he's in or she's in. So, for example, let's say he's currently in a relationship with somebody who's discarded him. Okay, he's now just he's been discarded by this person who's woken up to them to the narcissistic manipulation they're going through and they've had enough they say i'm not dealing with this anymore goodbye and they walk out of the narcissist life a narcissist here hasn't had time to find a backup victim like a new one so they have to go running back to old source of supply quickly they need emergency supply and they will go through their emergency store cupboard and they will find the one woman or the one man who is always willing to take them back, always a sucker for what they have to say, always falling for the false self and the false promises. So the narcissist will go back to that person. They don't want to be with that person. Believe me, they don't want to be with that person. But to you, to the person who has just walked away from the narcissist in that current situation, they will look like the narcissist has just moved on so quickly. The narcissist is happy the narcissist is back with somebody who they they said that they would never be with. And it could be an ex. It could be an ex that they've had children with, an ex that they've been married to. It could be anybody. But sometimes it will shock you who the person moves on to because you might have known that person as a friend of the narcissist. You may have met that person before. You may have been introduced to that person as a family friend or, you know, as, as a friend of the narcissist or... So it might shock you, it might really shock you to walk away from a narcissistic relationship only to find two weeks later he's now in a relationship with this old source of supply who's quickly taken him back because this old source of supply is so hung up on the narcissist that she cannot see. She cannot see what he's doing and how he's using her as a crutch just to get through that narcissistic injury of being discarded. He needs her. He needs her quickly so that he doesn't, he's not alone and so that he feels that, you know, I've got someone as an emotional dumping ground for when I find better supply because he doesn't respect that source of supply right there. He doesn't respect her because she's, took, she's taken him back knowing he's not a good person, knowing he's not a nice person, you see? So... He will leave and abandon and discard that source of supply when he finds a new one. So while he's with her, or while she, while she is with him, I told you it applies to both, he will be on dating apps. He will be out there looking for a new shiny source of supply. That's a challenge. Because it's making him feel so bad to be with this old source of supply that he seems as inferior to him. He sees this woman as inferior because she's not clever. She's easily fooled. She's easily manipulated. So they are immediately on the hunt of looking for a new source of supply, but they will love bomb the old source of supply because they need to keep that love. They need to keep that source of supply in their life for as long as possible because they don't know how long it's going to take for them to find a good source of new supply. So it will look like the narcissist has moved on and having a great relationship now, this woman is completely delusional in this in this entire scenario. She's posting on Facebook, Instagram, you know, that she's in a relationship with this guy. She may have been jealous of you. If you're a woman, she may have been jealous of you being in a relationship with this narcissist. And now she wants to get back at you. She wants to make you jealous. So she will plaster her new, well, her recycled relationship with the narcissist back on social media to get a reaction out of you. And sometimes the narcissist will allow this to happen because it's a form of triangulation. It's a form of hoovering you as well, hoovering you back into the relationship because the narcissist now wants you to come running back saying, how the hell did you manage 
to get into a relationship that fast with a woman you said you would never, ever, ever be with. So if he's the one posting on social media of his new relationship, which is unlikely when it comes to an old source, it's unlikely, because again, he doesn't feel proud to have this old source of supply. They post, they normally post when they're with the new source of supply, because the new source of supply makes them feel good about themselves. But the old source of supply makes them feel rubbish about themselves because they feel like they've downgraded. So the narcissist himself or herself won't really post anything, anything on social media about this new relationship because they're embarrassed. They don't want people to know that they've gone back to an ex that they complained about, that they talked badly about. Apparently she was the crazy ex. She was the unstable one. She was the mentally you know, insane one. So he doesn't want people to question why all of a sudden he's now in a relationship with her after everything he said about her. But the, but the old source of supply will be the happy one, will be the happy one that the narcissist is back in her life. She's let him hoover her. And now she's the one who's putting it all over social media out of hope that you will see it. Out of hope that you are going to be the one to see it. And in, you know, the new, the new, the, the recycled source of supply wants to feel like she's got one up on you or he's got one up on you. And so they will keep posting, posting, posting until they get a reaction out of you. Until you go back to the narcissist, angry, saying, I just saw on, uh, on her Instagram page that you're with her. They want the drama. They want the drama and he will love it if you do that. If you ever see that, do not say a word. Leave them to it they deserve each other leave them to it because it's all a game it's all a fake facade it's all a complete illusion um the woman herself or the man himself is deluded because they think the narcissist cares and has run back to them saying oh you were right about that person i'm so sorry you know that person um let me down they walked out on me you were the right person all along let's give it another go that's how they love bomb the old source of supply that's how they get the old source of supply to come back but they don't know the old source of supply doesn't know that their time is numbered like there is a countdown timer until the narcissist finds a better source of supply so that's the recycled source of supply, the one who keeps coming back to the narcissist, keeps coming back because they just feel so happy that they've got a chance, so happy the narcissist came back, you see. And the, the recycled old source of supply is the one the narcissist will discard the most, will disrespect the most, will abuse the most, because every single time you take a narcissist back, they will disrespect you even more. The abuse will be worse um, the disrespect will be worse, everything will be worse, because you are now making the narcissist feel so awful about himself or herself, you are reminding that narcissist of how low they are, of how, of how disgusting they are as people, and they see, they see their own weakness in you, in that recycled old source of supply, so if a narcissist comes to hoover you, it's not good news, it's not good news because they think that you're still weak, they're still heat checking you to see if you're still weak, if you're still, you know, um, if you're still gullible, if you're still naive, if you haven't learned anything from your experience with them. If a narcissist comes to hoover you, if they have the audacity to come and hoover you after you've walked out on them, or even after they've discarded you, um, it's not a good sign. It means that that person has no respect for you or your boundaries. You've told them clearly to leave the, to leave you alone. But they're trying their luck. They're trying their luck. A lot of people ask me, will the narcissist come back to me? Will the narcissist realise what they've lost? Will the narcissist realise and regret what they did to me? Will they, will they, will they? It doesn't matter if they do or don't. You are so lucky to be rid of them. Rid of them. And, and honestly, they regret it. Honestly, they don't move on. Honestly, they will never be happy in their lives because this is the cycle they constantly go through in their lives. You don't need to know what they're doing, what they're up to, if they regret it, if they're happy, if they're not happy. It's enough that they constantly live their lives in this cycle. They will never be happy with anybody because eventually even the new source of supply will let them down. The benefits that they get from that source of supply will run out. 
or the or the person will wake up and say, "Hey, you're taking advantage of me. I'm not having this anymore," and they'll walk out. The narcissist days are numbered with every single person they have a relationship with. Every single time, so you really need to stop worrying about you know is the narcissist ever going to come back? You don't want him or her to come back, because if they come back, it means that they've put you. In the old supply storage cupboard. That's where you belong in their in their lives. And you don't deserve that. If a narcissist comes back, he just wants to check if you're still in that store cupboard that he can use for emergencies. Now, if, if his uh, new relationship isn't working out, let me go and check. I need to do a stock check. Who's there? Who's there that I can uh, that I can use and abuse when when the time comes? Oh, she's still there. He's still there. All is good. So they come to hoover you just to check that you're still there. Just to check that you're still weak and naive. You know, it's offensive when a, when a narcissist comes to try and hoover you back in. It means they still don't have any respect for you. They still believe that they can keep you in that store cupboard for emergencies. When does a narcissist never hoover you when they respect you? When they have like the highest amount of respect for you, for completely cutting them off for standing up for yourself, for not allowing them to abuse you, for walking out on them, for pulling the rug from under their feet when they did not expect it, when they did not expect you to stand up for yourself, when you've caused them such a narcissistic injury, when they know that to have you back, they have to meet a high standard of moral behaviour and requirements, that is when the narcissist will not come back to hoover you. There are loads of people who say every narcissist will come back. It's not true. There are some narcissists who will not dare. They will not dare to come back and hoover you because of the respect they have for you. They know that you can't be played. They know that you're intelligent. They know that you know who they are. They know that you have high value for yourself. They know that they'd have to meet a standard that they are unable to meet. So if they were to come back into your life or they were to come back and attempt to try and get their foot in the door by hoovering you, they are 100% sure that their ego will be smashed by you for the second time when you reject them. You're going to tell them to do one and they're not going to want to hear that because it's going to take every every ounce of, of pride that they have that they, that they have to sacrifice to hoover such a person. They're putting their ego on the line. Their ego is now at risk of being completely destroyed by a second rejection from that person. So in many cases, when the, when the narcissist views you like that in high regard and with such respect, you won't hear from them again. They will move on. They'll go and find somebody else, but they won't come back to you. They won't attempt it. They can't risk it. Because the first time you did that to them, the first time you rejected them by walking out on them, before they discarded you, you destroyed them in a way that you would never understand. They, they went into a deep depression because of that. Because they had an amazing source of supply that they took for granted and that they thought that they could play the game on. But they did not know that you were smart enough to get out of that situation before they could get the benefits they wanted from you. And it caused them such pain because narcissists hate to lose. They hate to lose. So these are the people who they don't hoover. Not everyone gets hoovered. And if you don't get hoovered, well done. Honestly, if you don't get hoovered, you have to acknowledge that you are someone of value, that you are someone of self-worth, that you are someone who possesses you know, a high level of dignity. Now, there does come a time when the narcissist will also not hoover a source of supply that they've hoovered for about 10, 10, 15 times because they get so sick of that person constantly being accepting of being a doormat, being an emotional punching bag. So, and I've seen it, I've seen it. I've seen women go back to an abuser or men go back to an abuser countless times, more than 10 times. They get discarded, hoovered, discarded, hoovered, discarded, hoover, until even the narcissist can't bear to look at them anymore, can't bear to deal with them anymore. 
because of how low their self-worth is. So there will come a time when even the narcissist won't even bother, won't even bother recycling that particular source of supply anymore. It's completely, completely out of the question after a certain, out of a certain, after a certain number of times. Um, and they would rather look for someone else who could be a fresher source of supply. So you won't get hoovered in those two cases when you've been com- when you've been totally, totally wrung out from, you know, going through multiple cycles of discard and hoovering, and when your dignity and self esteem is so high and your standards are so high that a narcissist knows that he or she wouldn't be able to meet those standards, and if they're not able to meet those standards, then you make them feel really bad about themselves. You make them feel like they're not good enough. You are the person who makes them feel like a failure, like they're unable to meet those standards and those demands because they're nowhere to your level. They are nowhere capable of, you know, meeting standards that may even be the basic minimum. It may be the basic minimum that a narcissist is unable to fulfill for you. And it just makes them feel so rubbish that they cannot meet those standards because they love to see themselves as superior. They love to see themselves as grandiose and, 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 you know, and deserving of everything. But when they come across somebody who has such high value and high self-esteem and you, you, you communicate that to the narcissist that if you want me, you have to be a certain caliber of, of a human being. You have to be a certain type of person. Now, all of a sudden, you've made the narcissist feel worthless because he doesn't, he doesn't have that or she doesn't have that level of, you know, morality, that level of success, that level of integrity and dean, you know, all of these things. They know they don't have it, so they're not even going to bother trying. They're not even going to bother trying having you. And then it bothers them. It bothers them because narcissists always want what they can't have. It bothers them because narcissists always want to feel like they can get anything and anyone that they want. So the person that bothers them the most, that causes them the the most narcissistic injury, is that person they can't get. Because that person makes them feel unworthy. That person makes them feel incapable. That person makes them feel like they're not good enough. And that is the person that the narcissist will never get over. If you are that person who's walked away from a narcissistic relationship and you've walked away because of your self-value and you've said to the narcissist, look, I'm not staying in this relationship because in order for you to get X, Y, Z from me, I expect X, Y, Z in return. I'm not accepting this bad behavior. I'm not accepting this immaturity. I'm not accepting to be treated this way when, you know, you're not meeting any of my standards. If you walk away from a narcissist in that particular scenario, you will be the one that the narcissist will never get over. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. 20, 30 years can pass, you'll still be in their head. Because you're the one that they could never get. Narcissists spend most of their time targeting, targeting men and women that are easy to get. Easy to get. It's just a game for them. Yep, I got that woman, discarded her now. I got that man, yep, he can be discarded now. It's like a game of ego satisfaction. I'm going to prove to myself I can get any man or woman that I want. You see, there are some people they don't approach, they wouldn't even dare approach. They know that there are some people who are way out of their league, that there is no way in hell that they would ever be accepted. They just save themselves their egos and their egos from the beginning and don't approach those people because they don't want that narcissistic injury of being rejected. But when they go for somebody, when they go for someone who comes across as being very empathic, kind, nice, easygoing, down to earth, but this person is a high achiever, this person is highly intelligent, this person is very beautiful or very handsome, they are banking on your empathy to let them in. They are banking on your loneliness to let them in. They are banking on your dean. And you wanting to get married and have the halal and have all of that as a way for them to get in. So they will try their luck. In this case, they'll try their luck. You know, they see you as someone who's a high achiever with high standards and they'll say, let me see what I can get away with. Let me come across as being that religious person, that kind, empathic person, the compassionate person, you know, the family man, 
the community man. Let me come across as being that person so that they are willing to lower their standards for me to come in. They're willing to lower their request of someone being a high earner or someone being very beautiful, you know? Let me see if I can get them to lower those standards by me compensating with my false self of coming across as being someone who is a fantastic person in character, someone who they'll fall in love with, someone that I can use my love bombing on and it will work. And it works. In many cases, it's worked. It worked on me. It worked on loads of women that I know. You know a man will come in to your life and pretend to be that man with amazing character. And it makes you consider compromising on other things that you wouldn't normally compromise on to have such a nice and good man, a reliable man in your life. It happens. So when this type of person comes into your life and they manage to manipulate you with, you know, how loving and kind and sweet and, and helpful they are and how useful they are, um, it's only a matter of time bef before someone intelligent or someone who has, you know, self-respect, self-esteem um, begins to notice that there's something not right with that narcissist. Something's not right with that person at all. And you start to feel uncomfortable and you start to see that, why did I compromise on those things now that they are important to me? Why, how did this person manage to get me to compromise on X, Y, Z when the reality of the situation is he's not as kind as he said he was. He's not as charitable. He's not that family man. He's not responsible. He's not, you know, someone who takes care of things. She's not religious like she said she was. She is not as compassionate and as loving as she said she was what well, now all of a sudden the compromises that you made for that person start to bother you they start to really bother you and you're starting to feel resentment towards that person you're starting to feel resentment and then usually at that time when someone is aware of what's going on they'll walk away they'll walk away because during that time when you when it starts to bother you what you compromised on it's usually around the devaluation the devaluation stage. Now, the devaluation stage is when they get too comfortable. When the narcissist has his feet firmly in the situation and is now very comfortable. Now, what happens when someone gets very comfortable, the, not, the, the mask starts to slip off a little bit. And now you start to see their rudeness and their disrespect come out. And them being distant and argumentative. And they're withdrawing certain things from you. And they're starting to look like they're bored and they're starting to look like they're miserable. In fact, they were always miserable. But it's only now in the devaluation stage when they're getting too comfortable do you start to look at them and actually realise they are always miserable. They don't smile, they don't laugh. There's something about them that makes them so moody and low in energy all the time. When you start to notice that, um, the narcissist now, he doesn't know, she doesn't know that you've noticed this yet. It's just something that now you're picking up on because they're getting too comfortable, right? Now, usually at this stage, at this stage of the relationship, <clears throat> if the narcissist is doing it deliberately because he's now bored of you, he wants out or she wants out, this is the stage when they will start looking for new victims. They will start going on dating apps behind your back and, you know, they will start talking to other people, other men, other women, because they've got an exit plan now. They've got an exit plan to completely devalue you and move on to the next relationship as soon as this one is over. So usually it will happen when the narcissist is really bored or he realises that or she realises that you're holding them to a standard now. Like, hey, I'm starting to notice you're getting a bit too comfortable here. I'm starting to notice I'm not really getting anything out of this relationship from you. And, you know, if, the, if you want this relationship to work, you know, you need to pull your socks up a bit. You need to do this, this, this for it to work. That is when the narcissist will plan to discard you. That is when they'll start talking to other people. It'll be around that time. Um, now, if the narcissist is happy in this situation, he feels happy or she's happy that they're too comfortable you know, they're chilling, they're having a great life with you, you're taking care of them, everything is great, 
you know, they're just super comfortable. They're not thinking about a discard, but they're not realizing that they are showing you, they're starting to show you now who they really are. You're starting to see the depressive people they are, the lazy people that they are. You're starting to see the, like how they're, they, they're like children. He could be a 40 year old man, but he's acting like a teenager. She could be a 35-year-old woman and she's acting like a child with her temper tantrums and it starts to get to you. Now it's starting to really bother you. And this is when you start to plan the, deep, the, you know, the, the discard. This is when you start to get really fed up. But they're not noticing it. They're not noticing that you're getting fed up. You might mention things here and there. You might complain about things here and there. But they're not taking it seriously that you're actually going to leave. So if he, was, he, if he or she was playing the discard, like I said, they'd be looking for new supply. They wouldn't go back to old supply. Old supply is only for emergencies when they don't have a backup. They don't go backwards. But when they have time, when they, when they have time to plan an exit, when they really do want to exit, they will look for new source of supply because it's better for them to move on to someone new who doesn't know anything about them, who's never been abused by them. So they'll be completely naive and completely fresh to the whole situation. It's easier for a narcissist to find someone else than to actually go back. That's why the going back is for emergencies. So when you decide that, you know what, I've had, I've had enough of this. I've had enough of this, uh, this trifling man who's, you know, who I'm living with or who I'm considering for marriage or, and, and vice versa. Um, you decide to pull the rug. You decide, you know, enough's enough. I'm, uh, this isn't working out for me. I'm sorry. Goodbye. And you walk away. And you never contact that person again. You never contact that person again. They now go into hysterical panic mode. What's happened? What did I do? They'll blame you because they, they believe that they've had no warning. They've always had warnings. They've always been told, you know, about what you're happy with and not happy with. They've always been aware, but they've always felt that you were too invested in the relationship to leave. They've always felt like you were too invested that you gave too much, that you love them too much to leave because what you were giving them, they've never had it from anyone before. They've never been so invested in, you know, by someone before. So that's when they never think for a second that you would ever walk away and they would never walk away from that situation either because they're comfortable. They're comfortable as long as they're getting everything for free and everything easy. As soon as you start asking them to pull their socks up and actually make some effort and do some work, to keep the relationship together and to keep it working, that's when they start having an issue. So when you discard, when, I, wouldn't, I don't like to say the word discard here because empathic people don't discard. You know, you, as Muslims, we don't discard people. It's, it's a narcissistic thing that they do. When you walk away from a narcissist and you firmly shut that door behind you because you know now you've seen the real face, you've seen who they truly are, you've seen that, they're taking you for a ride and you never go back, that narcissist will experience the worst, the worst plummet into a deep depression pit that he's never or she's never experienced before. Because you've given them everything that they wanted. They were happy. They were comfortable. They were too comfortable. And that is what, you know, got them in this situation. They were too comfortable and they started to devalue you. When someone starts to get too comfortable, you'll start to see, because their mask starts to slip, because they're getting too comfortable, that's when they start becoming rude and disrespectful. They don't see it. They don't actually see it because they forget that the mask is slipping off. They forget. And they're just being themselves. And they don't see anything wrong with themselves. So when they're rude, abusive, disrespectful, you know, in that moment, they don't see that they're doing anything wrong because they are now fully themselves they are now fully at home with their feet up so they don't see why you're making such a big fuss they they ask you why are you being so argumentative why are you causing problems why are you constantly bringing up issues why can't you just be happy why can't you just be satisfied why does why is there always something that comes up every single month why this and why that you start to you know you start to poke them out of their comfortable chair that they're in and they don't like it they don't like it because now all of a sudden, you know, you've had enough time with them to see that actually who they were in the beginning isn't who they are right now. 
something has to be done about this. Hey, poke, poke, what's going on? You know, where was that person in the beginning? Where was that person who was hardworking and ambitious and this and that? Where it was? Where's he gone? They don't like it. But all narcissists know that they're on a countdown timer. They know, they know that one day their time will be up. But they don't realise with, with people who are intelligent and people who are, again, they've got self They've got self-worth and self-esteem and self-respect. They don't realise it would come that soon. And they're not prepared for it to come that soon. They're not prepared for that, for you walking away at all. Because they are firmly comfortable in their belief that you are not going anywhere. Anywhere. So when you walk away from this situation, what's, what's going to happen is the narcissist is now full of anger, rage. You know, they might even contact you and tell you sorry. They might apologise. They might try to find their way back in, you know, or they might not. They might just apologise without asking you to take them back because they want you to be the one to chase them and, and say, hey, you know, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have walked away. You know, I want you to come back. In most cases, with this particular situation, the narcissist will wait for you to come back. They are banking on you, um, hope, you know, on you making a mistake. Like, hey, sorry, I wasn't thinking straight. I was angry. I walked away because I was angry. I want you back. They'll happily come back. But believe me, they're already planning their discard of you. They're already planning to discard you because of the rejection that you've put them through, that pain of rejection that you've put them through. So if you take them back, I promise you, they are planning your discard. They are already going to be looking for another source of supply to make you pay for even wanting to leave them for making you pay for pulling the rug underneath their feet when everything was going fine for them. You think they're not going to make you pay if you take them back? Never take a narcissist back. The worst thing you can do for yourself in your life is to take a narcissist back after you've made a decision to walk away from them. If you allow them to hoover you back in, to make you feel guilty, to make you feel bad for your decision of walking away, you're going to get it. You're going to get it and you're going to get it bad because they will always make you pay for that rejection. They will never forget it. It's a narcissistic injury that they never forget. Never can they move on from that. It's just too much for them to move on from. And they will never trust you. They will always, you know, because you, you've reignited, you've refueled their um, abandonment issues that they've had since childhood. So now in their heads, they're like, well, this person has the ability to abandon me. They have the ability to leave me. So now I have to be smarter and I have to plan my discard next time before they do that to me again. And they'll do it once they completely knock your self-esteem. So when you take them back, you will realise that you will see that they start to really devalue you. They really start to destroy all the good things that you have in your life. They want everything destroyed before they leave because when they leave, they want to leave a burning building. They want to look back and see a burning building. A burning building that they never have to go back to again, that they will never hoover again, because that will be your punishment for what you did to them. A lot of people, a lot of people who take the narcissist back after they made a firm decision to walk away were completely destroyed the second time round. Completely destroyed. And I've seen it in many cases where men have taken back problematic women to have a child. They didn't have children the first time round. He, he decided that he wanted to leave a marriage you know, in, 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 in a safer, in a safer way, because he's like, alhamdulillah, I don't have children from her, let me walk away now, before I'm stuck with a child, and then he gets hoovered back in, he gets hoovered back in, after all the abuse he's gone through, and then the second time, the woman in her head, she's thinking, in her mind, she's thinking, what can I do to stop another discard from happening, to stop another incident of him walking away from me, what can I do, I need to get pregnant, I need to get pregnant because that's going to make him stay in the relationship. So what happens is that she will get pregnant. She will have a child. She will make sure you get completely attached to that child. And while that's happening, she will treat you like dirt. It will be worse the second time around. Because now she feels like she's got the freedom to take all her revenge on you in, in, in devaluation. 
she will abuse you, she will humiliate you in front of people, she will do everything under the sun to punish you for that rejection, but she knows you're taking it because of the child. Now there's a child involved and you need to make this marriage work. She's a lot worse than she was before you walked away. That's what they do. Um, the same thing with men. And a man can come back into your life. You would have you would have left the situation child free, you know, problem free. You feel good about yourself that you made a really good decision, and then he comes to Hoover you, and he starts to make you feel bad, you know, Islamically, you know, Allah hates divorce. You know, let me make it work. I'm sorry I was going through a hard time. I didn't appreciate you. I took you for granted. I now know what I lost. I now know I have to fix up. I know. I now know I have to work on this and that. Some people fall for it. Some people fall for it. And they let that man back in. And then he gets her pregnant. Same cycle. He gets her pregnant. She, now is, she is now relying on him. She's now relying on him to be a good dad. She doesn't want to be a single mother. She knows how difficult it is to be, you know, to find a husband, a good husband, who's going to take on her child or her children after that. And the same cycle continues. If you are in a relationship right now with a narcissist and you do not have children, oh my goodness, for the love of God, try and get out of that. Try and get out of that relationship. Because if you get hoovered back in, or if you have children with this narcissist, that's when the devaluation will really happen because they know that you are a good person with integrity and you will do everything you can to you know to have your children be raised in a in a in a home where there are both parents they know that you're that kind of person they've already studied you they know that very well so usually when uh, you know in this situation when um someone comes back in after the empath has walked away and they get hoovered this is what usually happens. A child comes along. A child comes along in round two. And they use that child to, to, to punish you. To make you pay for what you did to them. It never gets better. It always gets worse. So, in this situation, when someone has walked away from the narcissist and they go into a horrible depression, they spiral down into a very bad, very bad state of mental being. They hate themselves. Now, they really don't feel good enough. They feel really awful about themselves. You know, they try to come back and then the person says, look, if you want to come back, you need to meet these high standards. You need to do this, 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 this for me to accept you back into my life. Number one, they're not willing to do it because all that time they didn't have to do all that work. So why should I do it now? And number two, they can't do it. So either they're not willing to do it because narcissists just don't have it in them to do that hard work to have what they want they want what they want easily they don't ever want to work hard for what they want so it's either going to come to me easily I'm not going to do the hard work or he cannot do the hard work he, he or she can't do the hard work they cannot meet your standards like for financial reasons for emotional reasons Whatever the reasons are, he realises or she realises now that they've seriously messed up an amazing opportunity because they got too comfortable and they took you for granted. They know that they did it to themselves. So now that you've put these conditions for them to come back, if they wanted to come back, you created a dilemma for them. Now they know that they can't come back. Now they really hate you. Now they really hate themselves because they know that they're the cause of all of this and they know that you're the best thing that ever happened to them. They know that you're the best thing that ever happened to them. Now, when they're going through this depression because they feel so embarrassed, how are they going to face their families? How are they going to face their friends when all their friends and families told them you're so lucky to have that person? You are so lucky to have such a wonderful wife or a wonderful husband or, you know... um. They know that everyone loves that partner. They're going to be so embarrassed that yet again, he has failed or she has failed to, you know, keep a, a good relationship together. A relationship that had a lot of good potential. They failed. And everyone is going to look at them as a failure and as a problem. Like, what is wrong with you? How could you let someone like that go? But they, 
the, the shame that they feel makes them run away from everybody. You might find that they go into isolation. They don't like to talk to anyone. They don't like to talk to their families. They go and dig themselves a hole and they sit in that hole because they're so ashamed of everybody. They're so ashamed that they cannot keep what they want, that they're, that they're stupid, that they think that they're smart, but they're not. All of that, all of these beliefs come tumbling over them in that time. They keep hearing it. They don't sleep. Narcissists always have problems sleeping because of everything that they do to themselves. All the self-sabotaging that they do to themselves doesn't allow them to sleep. You'll find that all of them have sleeping problems. They always have nightmares. They've always got gin coming into their, into their dreams and nightmares that, you know, that give them sleepless nights. It's because it's their nafs that torments them. Their ego torments them. Like, you're stupid. Why did you do that? You are worthless. You are useless. You have no value. You can't do anything. You can't have anything, you know? You're unlovable. You're unworthy. You're this. You're that. And it tortures the narcissist. It tortures the narcissist to, not, to, no, to no longer have you because you were the extension of their self-esteem. You were what was giving them value in society. Being with you gave them value being with you gave them self-respect people started to respect that person now they respected the narcissist oh look who you married you know you married well and they have respect now new respect for this narcissist who actually he was a nobody he didn't do anything in his life he's not achieved anything in his life but he's now got respect because he's married to you all of a sudden he finds himself without any of it all of a sudden he finds himself empty no self-worth, no self-esteem, no self-value. He's gone back to rock bottom. Rock bottom. And he's in survival mode now. He's in survival mode. You know, a lot of narcissists who experience this can actually become suicidal. There are lots of, su- there are lots of narcissists who actually commit suicide because they are unable to handle the self-hate at that point in time. If there is nothing in that narcissist's life to actually you know, motivate them to keep living, to keep, you know, to keep moving, a lot of them will commit suicide. So for example, if it's, if someone has children, then that child may prevent him or her from, you know, um, from taking their life when they're so low in life. You know, they might remember that I've got a child or I've got this, I've got that, that I need to, you know, I can't be doing this to, um, to my children, for example. Sometimes they have that empathy. They have that enough empathy to, You know, not do something like that. But there are lots of narcissists who, because their egos are so smashed by that point, they don't see a reason to live anymore. The false self is exposed. The false self is completely shattered. And that's what they depend on to get through life. They depend on that false self to get through life. And when that's been shattered, because they've been discarded by what gave them self-value and self-esteem, they go into a very dark place very dark place. People may not hear from them for weeks, for weeks. Well, so, what, so what happens here in that situation <clears throat> when a narcissist has plummeted that low, it might last about a week, a week or two. Um, the narcissist will be tortured for two weeks. And even in those two weeks, it would normally be in those two weeks when a narcissist will reach out to you to apologize because he realizes or she realizes who they really are and what they've done to you and how they took you for granted. In that moment of weakness where they see themselves for who they truly are, that's when they might reach out to you, send you a message and say, forgive me, I'm sorry. Only in that time, because they still haven't had the chance to process their emotions and actually justify it in the way that they want to see it, right? Right? Because in, the, in, that, in that raw period of time, they know that they're the problem. They know it's because of them, everything is ruined. Their life is ruined. So if you're going to get that message, it will come to you in those two weeks. In the first two weeks of them being in that very depressive state, when they really look at themselves. Um, and that's something that they want to run away from. And that's when they go to the old supply. I'll come on to that in a second. If you get the I'm sorry message months later, years later, that's the hoover. It's not genuine. If you get it when the narcissist has hit rock bottom and they're in that depressive state, most times it's it's genuine. They are genuinely saying sorry. However, 
you know, a lot of people here, they do feel sorry for them. They do feel really bad for them. They worry for them. I don't want this guy or this woman committing suicide because of me. You know, especially if they hint at it. Like a narcissist might say, There's, I've got no will to live anymore. I've got no reason to live. You know, I'm so sick. I'm in hospital. I'm in this. It could be, he could be genuine. She could be genuinely saying that. It could be real. It could be the truth. But it's what they have to go through. This is what they do to themselves. But a lot of people, they feel bad. They're like, no, I've got to take this narcissist back. It's now my problem. Now they take on the narcissist problem as their own problem and they want to solve that narcissist problem so that, that you know, he's not, he's no, he or she is no longer depressed, no longer, you know, and no longer in that state of being. So the empath, you know, or the codependent, they take on that person's grief and they say, you know what, it's fine, let's work it out. I don't want you to be in this state. I don't want you to be depressed. I don't want you to be sick. I don't want you to be suicidal. Come back and let's talk about it. Don't fall for this. This depressive state is temporary for a narcissist. It's temporary. He gets over it. He or she will get over it. Don't fall for being their hero. You know, being their saviour in that particular time. Don't do it. Because a narcissist cannot stand to be with him or herself for very long. So this depressive state won't last very long. Because what will happen is that the longer they stay in that depressive state, the longer they are unable to function. They won't be able to go to work. They won't be able to see any family or friends. They will not be able to function in life at all. They cannot eat, sleep, shower, nothing. And they have to get out, they have to get themselves out of that pit. They've got to get themselves out of that horrible pit. And who do they latch on to? The old supply. Because right now, they don't have the energy. They don't have the charm. They don't have the time to be on dating apps and charm other people, to charm new supply. They don't have the they don't have the they don't have the will. The last thing you want to do is go on a dating app or online, or whatever it is that you're doing, and find a new source of supply, because you need to present yourself in a very nice way. You can't present yourself as being someone who's hit rock bottom, depressed, disheveled, you've lost a lot of weight, you look terrible, you've had no sleep. You know, who's going to want to be with you then, when you're like that? Who's going to want to be with you when you are so depressed, so depressing, so negative, and you, all you're doing is talking about your ex and what they did and what happened and how they left you and abandoned you and, you know, dealing with your emotional train wreck of a life. Who's going to want to deal with that? No one. Narcissists will only go back on dating apps when they feel good about themselves, when they feel they can get validation from people. You know, their photos, they'll put some old photos up that make them look really good. The validation starts to give them the confidence to find new supply but when they're not in the mood when they're in such a depressed mood the last thing they're going to do or they're going to want to do is find new people because they know that new people will clock on to them being depressed very quickly and they're not going to want anything to do with that well healthy people won't want anything to do with that but at that time that they don't want people who are unhealthy either they don't want people they don't want to be with someone else who's going to wallow with them they want someone who's going to get them out of the pit. So if they go on a dating app and they find someone else who's depressed and they think, well, let's just be depressed together because I'm messed up as well. I've got mental health problems. I'm this, I'm that. Um, let me see if we can make each other feel better. That's not going to work for the narcissist. You're going to make them feel even worse. So when they go on dating apps, they want healthy people. They target people who are healthy mentally, healthy in a religious way you know, healthy in their lives and happy and joyful and because you get them out of their pit. So in that situation, because you've got no energy at all to be looking for new supply, you rummage through the emergency supply, the old emergency supply. Who is there that can save me right now? I need this person as a crutch. I can't walk. I can't function in life. I need someone to be my life support machine. And they will go back to the people who have always been there, have always been hoovered. Every time they've hoovered them, it's been successful. Who is that person? I found him. I found her. 
she's there she's still there um it could be an old supply an old friend who was jealous of you in your relationship you know that 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 woman who you know she was just a friend all of a sudden now she's found an opportunity to prove herself to this narcissist oh i'm here for you what's wrong you know what what's what's wrong what's happened here oh you know i'm sorry that i had to block you and and cut you off i had to do it because you know the woman i was with was jealous of you she was insecure you know i wasn't able to talk to you all this time because she made me do it and now I'm coming back to say sorry, you know, you were right all this time about her. She was crazy. She kicked me out. She treated me so badly. She abused me. Now, now he's giving validation to that woman. He's giving validation to, that, to the other woman who is now finding an opportunity to jump into his life. To jump into his life and be his saviour. Be his rock. Be everything. Now all of a sudden, he's with this woman in a relationship. She's someone he doesn't respect because he knows that that just, you know, saying those few words will get her, will get her um, functioning in hero mode. And it's the same for men, by the way, too. Women do this to men. But it's more common with, um, it's more common that men do this to women. So now she's, again, we go back to what I was talking about earlier in this podcast of this woman now being really happy that she's the one who's going to save this man from the damage that you've caused. Now, I'm going to show him I was the better option. I'm going to show him now that he was wrong all this time to not be with me. I'm going to show him all this time that I was right about you being a psycho, that I was right about you being not good for him. So she's going to go out of her way to prove herself to him, and he's going to use her as a crutch to feel better. All of a sudden now, that depressed man or depressed woman who was in that pit... And they couldn't survive, and they couldn't go to work, and they couldn't eat, and they couldn't sleep. Now they're now they're fine. All of a sudden, now they're okay, and they're being fueled by this new source of supply. Well, this old source of supply, that they're better off without you. They're better off. You don't hear from them. They're now focused on this new supply. Um, sorry, it's the old source of supply. They're focused on this new woman or this new man now because this person is helping them to get out of their pit. They're giving them a helping hand to get out of the pit. But that old source of supply has no idea that they're just being used. That they're just being used until the narcissist finds the new source of supply. The new source of supply, when does that happen? So this old source of supply is building this person's self-esteem up. She's building up his, you know, image, his self-image. She's helping him to eat again, go back to the gym, you know, do things in his life, do fun things. Um, to look after himself, to look good, to dress well. What's she doing? She's preparing him to have the right self-esteem and the right amount of charm to be able to get new sources of supply on dating apps. That is what she's doing. She has no idea that there's a discard coming. She's got no idea that one day she's going to find out that this man has chosen another woman over her, a new shiny toy, and he's going to discard her. Like he's not seeing anything long term with this woman. And when she realises, when the old source of supply realises that she's been used and replaced. And, you know, just been used as a crutch all this time. You will see the psycho woman come out of that one. Because she's been recycled a few times now. That is the one. She is the one who's going to show mental instability. She is the one who's going to go through all the smear campaigns. She is the one who is going to do anything she can to damage and destroy this man's life. She will do it because she will feel so deceived that he actually used her to get back on his feet so he could find something better. Now, sometimes the old source of supply is another narcissist. It's not always, co- it's not always another codependent. These with this woman that I've been used as an example, she would be a heavy codependent. Now, sometimes the woman is another narcissist. So narcissists can get with each other, but narcissists only do it temporarily. That's why they're used in emergency cases. They're not used as long term potentials. They're used in um, short term, you know, short term situations where a crutch is needed. They need a crutch. They need a life support machine to get them through the darkest days. They need um, 
you know, they, they just need that help. Another narcissist will, because they understand and they, you know, they've got something to benefit from each other, they will usually, you know, they can be in that situation together and be a life support, be a life support for each other. They might just go out, do fun things. They might, you know, um, she might even, there's a woman, a narcissistic woman, if she's been discarded before, if she's been discarded before and replaced before by a narcissistic man, and again, this goes vice versa, she will wait for an opportunity to completely ruin his life. So she sees him now in a relationship with someone else. That relationship doesn't go well. He comes crawling back, crying back to her, saying, you know, you were right. You know, I need you. Let's meet up. Let's talk. I'm sorry. Because she's a narcissist, she'll be like, okay, fine. I'll let you back in. I'll let you hoover me back in. Yes, narcissists can get hoovered in as well. I'll let you hoover me back in. But boy, am I going to make you pay. Boy, am I going to make you pay for blocking me when I needed you, ignoring me when I needed you because of another woman. You did it for another woman. You blocked me. You stopped talking to me. Boy, am I going to make you pay for choosing someone else over me. Boy, am I going to make you pay for not giving me what I wanted and you prioritised another woman over me. So she'll say, okay, I'll let you hoover. I'll let you hoover me. She will go into that man's life. They're both narcissists together. They both know the same game. He, because he's so, because he's hit rock bottom, he's still not aware, emotionally, he's not aware that this woman actually has evil intentions towards him. He just sees, oh, she was an easy hoover. You know, I got I got a crutch quite easily out of this one. He's not thinking that this woman um, has a game. She's got an end game. And she will pretend to be the hero. She will be there for him. She will give him everything only to pull the rug on him again. Um, but this time she will make sure that she does it in a way that was worse than the woman before. Much worse. She will do it when he needs her the most, when he's actually at his peak of happiness, a narcissistic woman will wait until then to pull the rug and totally discard him brutally, brutally discard him for her own payback. That's what a narcissistic source of supply would do, old source, that's been recycled before. That's what she'll do. And that's why you'll find in many cases, you know, um, it doesn't last very long. The new relationship doesn't last very long with a narcissist after you because he's been brutally discarded by another woman who has been bitter this whole time over his treatment of her and she's decided to use this opportunity of him being rock bottom, him hitting rock bottom, to get her revenge. She took it as an opportunity to jump in the situation and ruin his life even more because it's a fantastic opportunity for her. Now, other people looking out from the outside, looking in, they're looking at this woman like she's desperate. What's wrong with this woman? Why is she so desperate to be the hero? Why is she so desperate to get her foot in the door? So it's either because she's heavily codependent trying to prove herself or because she's so happy that she's finally got this opportunity where she can get her own revenge on this guy. So sorry, guys, that this podcast has been dragged out for a bit, but I'm trying to Include as much information as possible for you to get the real bigger picture in detail so for it to make sense, right? I really, want to ex- I really wanted to explain this to you so that, it's, um, so that it completely makes sense for you to understand why responding to a narcissistic hoover is so dangerous. Please, 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 if anyone ever tries to hoover you or tries to come back into your life and you know that that person is not a good person, they've abused you, they've disrespected you, they've treated you badly, do not respond at all. No good response and no bad response. Don't even respond in a negative way because you've given them fuel. You've given them validation and confirmation that you're still upset with them and they still have that emotional hold over you. Do not respond at all completely ignore any messages and any calls that you get completely because this is what you're gonna be facing you will either be old supply being stored you'll either be old recycled supply that's constantly hoovered 
again, 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 until the narcissist gets so sick of you, of dealing with you, that even he won't, he or she won't hoover you anymore. Or you will be the new source of supply that's being groomed because you have no idea of what's to come. And then when you do see a glimpse of that narcissist and you do decide to walk away, please stick to your decision. Stick to your gut instinct. Stick to your intuition and to your own belief. You've got to honour your beliefs. Honour how you feel and walk away from that situation. I promise you, that intuition that you have is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You've got to listen to it. When you walk away, when you make that decision to walk away, you never go back. Never go back because the narcissist will come back into your life. Will come back into your life. I'll say it a third time. Will come back into your life to make you pay for that rejection. So when you walk away, you do it with full conviction that you're doing the right thing. You've got to trust yourself. You've got to trust yourself and honour yourself. That's the, it's a sign of someone who has self-worth and self-respect when you trust yourself and you trust your intuition. And you don't let these people back into your life. So, inshallah, I hope that that's made everything clear for you, the different types of hoover, the different types of supply. And um, any questions, please put them, put, them, put them down in the comments. Let me know if this has benefited you. Please share this podcast with... Everyone you know who may benefit, inshallah, do like, subscribe to the channel. You know, please do share it with as many people as possible. I'm really trying to get this information out there to save people's lives, save people's mental health. Um, it's inshallah, it's for the you know, it's for the greater good. I'm doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa taala to help all of you people who are oblivious to what's going on in this Hoover cycle, and in just dealing with narcissists in general especially those who come across as being religious and come across as being Muslim. So please do share it. And inshallah, until the next podcast, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.